we're going to start the lesson. First thing we're going to do is going to be how to set the disc. Starting with the center delay set. After that, we'll go into the rim delay sets. Then we'll talk about spotting the disc. And then we'll go through the common mistakes, the common errors. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the center delay set. So the center delay set, well, the center delay is where you have it on the center and you continue to spin this frisbee on the center. And what happens is when people try to set the center delay, often they set it and the angle goes in all kinds of different directions. So what we're going to try to learn today is how to keep a consistent angle on the center set. Well, it's very similar to the ball toss in tennis. So if you see people doing a ball toss in tennis, you'll see them crouch, coil, and then put their hand up. Well, why don't they just put their hand up? If you just put your hand up, it should work. Why do they crouch? Why do they bend their knees? Well, when you crouch and bend your knees, it gives what I call extra weight to the disc. The heavier the disc is, the more you have to push up against, and the more flat or the more stable the angle is going to be. So for example, if I try to set the disc just using my hand, you'll see all kind of different angles I'm getting. Now, if I do the same thing, I'll go sideways here. So this is without using my legs. You can see it's kind of jumping all over the place. Now, if I come down with it and bend my knees, can you see my knees bending here? Let me tilt this down a little bit. Okay, so you see my knees are bending now. Now watch what happens. You see that? I also have a longer, a longer time that I'm making contact with the disc because I'm bringing it down and as I'm bringing it up, I'm making, if I'm just pushing it up now, it happens immediately. When I'm bringing it down, then I have a longer time to bring it up and then I have more control. So notice this set, how nice and flat the angle is. So you want, usually you want a flat angle when you're doing center delay moves. However, when you're doing a pull, if you do a flat angle every time, you're not be able to, going to be able to get the pull. Why not? Because you actually have to have a slight inclination. For example, under the leg pull, there's a flat angle. Under the leg pull, under the leg pull, under the leg pull. And now, look at this angle. Under the leg pull, there it is. Notice that the angle is actually at about 5%. It's not flat. How do I get a flat angle on the camera here? Yeah. Okay, it's not flat. It's about like that. And it's coming back at me. Okay, so the first thing we need to learn in order to make this center set. Well, the first thing is your hand position. There are two hand positions in freestyle when you're doing a nail delay. There's the thumbs down and finger up hand position, and then the thumbs up and the finger coming from underneath position. This position gives you very little ability to move because you're kind of stuck here. Whereas this position, you really have a lot more flexibility, and this is the best position to do the under the leg moves and these type of moves. You can still do under the leg like this. You just don't have quite as much flexibility. And for what I'm going to teach you now, it's going to be a lot better to have this position, the underhand position. Now notice my other fingers. I'm not going like this. 
My other fingers are extended. Why? Because as you're delaying the disc, if your fingers are closed like this, you you're in a fist and you're more and you're more tense. When your when your other fingers are like this, you actually have a wider area of movement and as you're angling the disc in different angles, you're not going to be hitting it or touching it, and it just gives you more of a flexibility with the type of angle. So this is basically what you want to do. Make yourself a high five hand and bring one finger up, and that is the hand position, the finger position. I'm using my index finger. You can also use the other fingers, whichever you want. This finger is fine as well, but it's a little harder to keep the other fingers out of the way. So for me, it's easier to use the index fingers like this. And I've got a disc where I've actually color coded the bottom here. That's the bottom. And I'm going to show you. You can see that. Let's go up with it here. Okay, so. Okay, maybe you can see that. Hope so. All right. Okay, so here we are. Now, I've talked to you about the hand position. Now we're going to do something that's called the arm swing. The arm swing, imagine that you're bowling. Does anybody bowl? You take the bowling ball and you swing and you, and you roll the ball, or you roll anything on the ground. You swing and you roll it on the ground. That's a very natural swing. Well, that's the set for the center delay. So it seems very easy, right? Mm, not so much. So imagine that you're, you're spinning the disc now here. Now, an arm swing is something that goes back and forward. Well, you're spinning the disc. You can't go back. So I'll go sideways here. Here's the arm swing I'm talking about. But you can come towards you, take your elbow here and bring it to your bring it to your side. The closer your elbow is here, the more arm swing and with the center delay you're going to get. Because now I'm going to move on to talk to something, talk about something that's called disc, disc procession. The disc procession is basically the movement of the of the disc as it's spinning. So the angle, as the disc is spinning, it processes into different angles. Well, we want to create our own disc procession when we're doing the center delay. It's not a delay that goes straight up. It's a delay that comes from this angle, okay? You can see that, from this angle here, and then you set like this. And that's not flat. Flat is like this. It's going to be like this and come back to you. So it's like a rocking motion. It starts here and goes here. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's the idea. So watch. Now, here it is. I have it too far away from me. I'm going to bring it close. Now I'm going to, I'm going to step backwards and I'm going to bend my knees. By, by lowering the disc, I'm going to change the angle. Now watch this. The disc is usually in the center, right? If you Take your center delay here, the front part of the disc will go down. So here's the center. Here's the center. If you take the disc here, it will change the angle. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be in the center here. I'm going to be back here. I'm going to be back around right here, not in the center, back here, towards me. So my finger is going, as I lower the disc, I'm going to bring my finger and the disc towards me and change the angle a little bit. Watch. Okay, so, so that's the idea. So I think we should all just, uh, a lot of you have discs at home, try not only this angle change where you're bringing it towards you and away from you, but try side to side too. So let's try to swing our arm in, in side to side directions, side to side, and 
forward and backward and forward. Here it is again. Forward and backward and forward. And here side to side. Try to keep the center delay and see if you can do that. Once you've mastered the sort of different angles like that, then it's going to give you the angle that you need for a center delay set. So since we, we don't really have a lot of time that I can give you coaching yet, at the end of the lesson, I want us all to try it so I can see you try to do this. But this is just something as if you're writing it down in your mind now to try later. The next thing we're going to try is... to set the angle and make different catches. So we're going to center delay into pull. So actually, let's, first of all, let's just do a basic fall. So, okay, now I've got my center delay. I've got my angle. Now let's think about a pull. The most basic pull is just straight under your leg. So you can actually do this without spinning the disc. Just hold it in your other hand Put your leg up and grab it with your other hand. Now imagine that the disc is spinning and your finger is getting it. So notice that that's not a flat set. You're usually holding it at this at this angle. So in fact, here we go. I'm going to create that angle and then go here. Watch it again. I'm going to create this angle and then I'm going to go there. Why do I want that angle? Because that's the angle that's, that comes directly under my leg. Even though it's a center pull, there's a slight angle to it. Same thing with the other leg. So if I try to just do it like this, I'm going to fall down. That's a flat set. But if I start with this angle, if I start with this angle, and then rock it back and give it that angle, now there's all kinds of room for me to do that pull. Watch this. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Okay, so that's the idea of center delay pulls. Now, we can also do a spin after the center delay. This gets a little more complicated, so it's a little more advanced, but it's not that much different than what we just did. Here we go again. Here's the, here's the arm rock. Here's the procession towards you and away from you. Now, I'm going to set it up, and as soon as I like the angle, I'm going to spin around, and I'm going to take the center delay again. Oh, don't like that angle. Eh, don't like that one that much. like that one pretty much. Oh, wait a second. What was going on here? Okay, a couple things are going on. Notice I'm bending my knees when I'm setting this set. Okay, so after, after we finish this, we'll do the red delays, and then I'm going to show you a video of Eduardo Turi and how he sets his double spinning set, which is the, basic, the same set you set for no spins, for under the leg pulls, for one spin, for two spins, it's always the same set. But for a double spinning set, you really have to set it higher. And when you set it higher, you're going to bend your knees a little more because it needs to be heavier and you need to go down lower. So this is just one. Now, if I was doing a double spin, I'd go like that, okay? I'm not gonna do a double spin now because I have uh, lots of breakables here, but two, imagine that was a double spin. So you notice that I'm coming back a little further, I'm bending my knees a little bit more, I'm bending my knees a little more, and then I'm going up. Now, where do you let the disc off? Well, you start just below your hip here, and you leave the frisbee about at the bottom, about your belly button. So it's from here to here, now you leave the frisbee. Your hand stays and the frisbee goes up. Okay, the last thing I want to do with the center delay is talk about how to do one spin into a pull. So remember, we did our perceptions. If I do this pull, I notice the angle first. This is the angle I want. So I need to go and rock the other angle like a mirror. 
If I want that angle, I begin with this angle. So I'm going to begin with this angle. Boom. I'm going to begin with this angle. Boom. Now there's one more move I can do, and this is called a figure four pull out. With this time, I don't want this angle because I'm pulling it here in this direction. So if it's coming this direction, that's the angle. This, the other ones are coming this direction and this direction. This time, I'm going to be coming in this direction. So what angle do I want? Well, that's the angle I want. How do I set it? The opposite. So I have to go across my body and then give it that angle. Okay, here we go. And that's it. Okay, so the last thing was is doing spinning catches with with the center delay. And catches are catches are, are very easy when you get the right angle on it. And pretty much it's always going to be that angle that's that under the leg angle, like this, like this, or the other angle, which is the left-handed angle as well, for setting these type of moves. Once again, you can do all of these moves left-handed as well. Okay? Same thing with setting the angle left-handed. Watch this. So I want this angle to do a right-handed pull. There it is. Just try to experiment with it, but remember, don't force the angle, but you want to understand the angle first. So once you understand what the angle is you need, then you really have to pay attention to what angle you're giving yourself. Okay, so that's it for the center delay. Um, I'm going to save the questions until the end, and I'm going to move on to the rib delays now. So, if you notice this disc, I've, I've colored it into four different quadrants. Well, what are the quadrants for? Well, when you do it, rim delay is much different than a center delay. The rim delay means you're taking your fingernail and you're spin, continuing the spin of the disc on your nail. Well, the idea is the same. We, we want to create angles. But when, the, when you have a rim delay, suddenly the angle wants to, wants to keep processing by itself. So for example, if I have a center delay and I let it go to the rim, it's going to start going processing in this direction and eventually go in a full circle. Well, what's useful to me? Well, remember the center delay? If I want this pull, if I want this angle, I should start like this. Same thing with the, with the rim delay. If I'm getting a rim delay, then I actually start with that opposite angle. Now, it's spinning here and it's starting to process and the angle is changing. Now I have to wait. Don't go now because that's going to go over my head. Now, it's, if I go this way, it's going to go way to the left. Wait, 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 there it is. That's the angle, now I push it. And that's the angle for this pull. Watch, wait, there it is. I even got a center delay off of it. So the key with this is to create the angle. If you just go like this, you're never gonna get the right angle. Once again, we're talking about bending your knees and dropping your hand. Remember the center delay. We bent our knees and we dropped our hand then we went up with the rim delay, same thing, and we want to put a little twist. Because if we start here and we let it get behind us, if we let it get behind us here, kind of twist our hips a little bit. Start here, let it get behind you, and now you can, you can come up. So once again, the motion of the rim delay is, it's in the rim here, it's processing, you're dropping your hand, Notice how my fingers are out of the way. My fingers are not like this. If my fingers are like this, I'm hitting it. My fingers are like that. Okay, so there's my hand. Here's a center delay. Now it's a rim delay. Now here's the, the first angle. Now it starts processing. 
Once again, this is with clock. It's, this, it's the opposite with counterclockwise, with the left spin. It's just the opposite spin. It possesses this way, and then you come up. So you want to drop your hand, and then the disc is going to end up on the left side, on this side of your finger, and it's going to start changing. Once you get the right angle, now you turn your hand into the second position. We started with this position. We're going to end with this position. It's this. So we should all practice this, this movement right here. Watch. There it is. Just experiment with it. You can see I'm going fast. You really should go slower. The slower you can do it, the more control you're going to have. Practice even going in a circle like this and then pushing it up. Here we go again. Start at this height, drop it down, go in a circle, and see where you go. Start to experiment with it. See if you can get that angle that you're looking for. See, that wasn't a good angle. That's the angle. How did, look, no, that's not it. That's not it. Go slower. That was it. Look, there's that other one for the left hand. Wait, and there it is again. So that is the basic of the rim delay. Now let's try a couple variations. The variations with the rim delay are plentiful. There are tons. Think of basically any type of move you can do with under the leg, behind the back, those kinds of moves, and you can do a rib delay to them. The first most basic one is the under the leg rib delay. So remember we did the under the leg pull, we kind of got an angle on it, and we did the under the leg pull. Well, do the same thing, but let it come down to the rim. Now notice how I dropped my head. Why did I drop my head that time? Because I want it not all, because with the center delay, I bring it up. With the rim delay, you kind of keep going down. With the rim delay, you have to keep going down and then wait for the angle to come up. So watch this. Now wait, there's the angle. One more time. Down. Wait, 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 that's the angle. Okay. One more time. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now the other variations of the pull-out with the rim delay. Obviously the other leg like this. Behind the back. I'm going to use my setup here. Okay, and then there, there's tons of other ones. Some easier ones for beginners. With the right hand, remember, we've been doing this. What we can do is we can, we can put our leg into it. Well, that looked easy, didn't it? Well, it's coming down, and there it is, with the left hand. One of the most basic ones with your left hand, remember it's the same motion. Left hand, center, drop it, and come back. Once again, my fingers are like this. With the left hand, with clockwise spin, this is a much more restricted movement. With the right hand, you've got a lot more movement. With the left hand, you're kind of here. But you can very easily take this thing and put it under your leg, and put it under your leg, and put it behind your back. It's always the same movement, but you have to keep, notice how my hand is here as I'm spinning this. I'm making sure that my fingers are out of the way and that I've got movement coming down and forward, coming down and then forward. Okay, next thing I wanna talk about very quickly is the rim set into a center delay. So, we're working on our rim set. Now I want to get it up into the air and do one spin. Now if I can do one spin and I can get a center delay, then that's, that's good. That means I'm controlling where that rim set is going. So, do it this direction. So this is something else to try. Until you're able to spin and locate the frisbee, it's going to be very difficult to spin and catch it. So a nail delay is a good way to start with spinning nail delay 
rim set and moves. And then eventually you can get it to, so that you're catching it under your leg after one spin. And it's coming together pretty well. There are different angles that you can set. Setting your under the leg angles, setting your triple fake angles, setting your scarecrow angles. That's more advanced stuff, but if you notice, it's always the exact same move. And with counter, it's the exact same thing on the other side. Here it is with counter. It's here, and then there. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is talk about the common mistakes. Uh, actually, before that, I want to have my assistant come. And we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about something called spotting the disc. So I've got my little disc spotter here. What's this? Uh, looks like I'm fishing. Well, this is going to help us understand how to do the spinning moves. When you do a spin, you have to locate the frisbee two times. So in just a moment, I'm going to have my lovely assistant come and join me. But for now, okay, so imagine I want to do one center delay, do one spin, and do one pull out under my leg. Well, when I'm spinning, I've lost the frisbee. So I want to set it. Let me get further away so you can see my feet here. The feet are pretty important for this move. Okay. Okay, so watch my feet here. Okay, here's the set. I've got my right leg behind me here. My left leg, my left foot is in front. I'm going to bend. Now, if you try to do moves with both your feet together, you're not going to have any sideways and, and pivot action. So your rock, especially if you have one leg in front, left leg in front. Now, here's the set. Boom. Okay, the set is here, and I'm going to do my spin. And then my pull out. So, so here's the idea. To do the spinning, now remember, we already learned about this angle. The angle is so important. So, when I know the angle I want, it's better to do the move without the spin first. So I want to do this move. Okay. Now, that means when I spin, there's a frisbee. I'm spinning once. Now I have to locate it. We got 10 more minutes, so we're doing good. Now I have to locate it and then reset my balance. So it's three moves in once. There's one, there's the spin, there's the spot, and the pull. The set, check where the disc is. The spin, spot the disc, wait, and do the second one. Here it comes. One. Okay. So very important if you're doing two spins. So this is for the advanced students. Hilaria, can you help me? Okay, so if we're gonna do a double spin, I'll get the camera a little higher here so you can see this. If I'm gonna do a double spinning pull, I need to set that frisbee higher. Well, hold on a second. So the set, once again, I'm gonna bring it back toward me here, and then I'm going up like that. Okay. So once again, back toward me, one leg in front, knees bent, back toward me. Now, get the angle, there it is, boom. That's good enough angle to do a double spin. How do you do a double spin? Set the disc up. There it is, right here, there we go. Okay, so there's the angle, a little lower. Okay. There it is. Now, when it's there, I'm looking at it and I'm spinning. I'll go down. Okay, there's one spin. There's one spin. Now I'm spotting it again. There's another spin. And now I'm spotting it one more time before I do the catch. So you're spotting the disc twice. So before, before I finish today's meeting, 
Uh, by the way, I am going to resume again. If, uh, if you go to the Facebook page, I will send uh, a link to another Zoom meeting because this is just about to end. So we're just about to end here. So uh, I did want to share with you one thing that's very important. And this is a, um, I'm going to share with you the screen. I hope that you can see this, you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and share with you this. Okay. So take a look at this video. This is Eduardo Turi. Well, Eduardo Turi is going to do a double spinning pull. Now watch. The disc is raised upward. You see the angle of the disc here? Now his right knee is beginning to straighten as he's doing the setup. So now you can see his right leg is straightening. Now he, look at the spotting of the disc. And the angle is not a flat angle here. We've got a little bit of an angle. Okay, now. Now he spots the disc again. And there it is again. Look at his eyes. His eyes are focused on that disc. And there's the pull. Once again, that is not a flat angle. It's a little bit of an angle with the procession. So here it is again. And here's some of his rim delay moves. So if you notice how he does that rim delay. He's coming down. Look at how low he gets. Look at how low. It's almost touching the ground. Now he comes up. So that's what you want to keep practicing. See the angle. The angle starts, that's the opposite angle he wants, and he ends up with the angle that he wants, right there. See that angle? So there's the angle that you want, and that takes a lot of practice, but look at this. See, that's the opposite angle. Now wait, he'll come up, and that's the angle. One more time. So I'm going to show you just a couple more here that I took from a, a beach tournament. I know we missed the beach right now. Um, here's the angle again. Take a look here. Notice how he's setting that flamingo. Here's with the left hand. Look at her, look at her fingers here. So she's got one finger making the connection and she's going down. See how far down she is. But watch the results. Look at how nice the angle is when she comes up. Okay? And Another one here is with the left hand as well. You can see his fingers and go down and up. And here's Francesco going with the under the leg. So this is the same thing. He's got it on his left hand. He gets it here and you swoop it down and then up. Okay, so um, we're down to four minutes left. Um, I hope you all um, enjoyed that. I don't, I didn't, um, didn't really have time for feedback. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this. And does anybody have a quick question before, uh, before we finish? I know this was all in English, uh, Adriana. Um, I know that you were able to understand it, but uh, I don't know if the other Colombian players they were. Any, any quick questions uh, that you guys have? Uh, I can see the chat now. Um, how do I fix my facial expressions? Well, that's a permanent condition, James. Sorry. Um, being recorded. I don't know if it's being recorded. Um, anyway, um, let's see. I don't have... There, I think my volume was turned off. Does anybody have a question here? Perfect, sir. Perfect. Okay, yes, I can see Santiago, good. Um, okay, so hopefully this is enough to give us some homework. Um, what we can do is, if you guys are interested, we can do a follow-up lesson next week, and you can show me what, uh, what you guys have been working on and what questions you have. So um, the idea is, was to kind of try it this time and see, and see how it went. So um, uh, what, what do you think, Juliana? It's okay. You you are the master of study tapes, so I'm very <laughs> curious. Um, I I I very much appreciated this. I okay. I think I do the angle, but I didn't consciously know that that was necessary. So now that I know to think about that, that's going to make things easier. 
Okay, okay. Um, any suggestions? Uh, were you able to see? Because I'm kind of just winging it here. So, um, sometimes there was pixelation. You're moving so okay. fast. <laughs> I don't think there's any way to solve that. Huh. Okay. Yeah, maybe I can pre-record some stuff and, and get it on video. Um, so yeah. Okay. I think the the thanks, Juliana. I think the uh, the usefulness of Zoom also is to interact. So I think next time that what we can do is I'll put some stuff out uh, beforehand and I'll put some videos beforehand and then you guys can try it. I can watch you. And I didn't really get time to really talk about the common errors as well. The common errors are where you don't spot the disc correctly. You go too quickly when you set the disc and those kind of mistakes. So um, I think for the next lesson, we'll, we'll try to do like a tiny room sort of um, a clinic so I can see all of you guys trying it and then we can make our normal mistakes or whatever and I can hopefully give you some um, give you some tips so that it's you know it's easy to watch somebody else do it it's not so easy to do it yourself so uh, Andre what what do you think about that yeah that sounds great cool. uh, thank you very much for this lesson by the way I, cool. I don't think I've ever consciously thought about setting from the center of the disc so okay. that's definitely something that i'll be uh, practicing tomorrow okay you can also practice it in your room just experimenting with kind of the angles and how consistently you can get uh get the angles good okay guys we're down to our last minute so thank you very much and uh um i'll see you all next week thank you tommy okay bye-bye thanks everybody